Hey everybody, this is Pixel Monkey. I'm uh, here with another updated tutorial. A um, couple weeks ago we got a um, new update to Beam. It took us to V.27 and along with that we uh, we got access to a new map. Uh, this is Johnson Valley. It's a desert based map with a lot of new rocks and different objects and stuff. And so I figured with the new update it may be time to go ahead and um, start a new video for how to use this as a base map for your own custom maps. Um, so we're going to walk through all the steps today and um, hopefully by the time you're through the video you should be able to uh, to start your own map uh, from scratch without anything on the map. Uh, may even go as far as doing a custom height map uh, import as well. So uh, first things first, um, let's, uh, let's dump out of uh, BeamNG and get started. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to um, find the Johnson Valley map. Now my installation happens to be in a um, non-standard place, not on the C drive. So mine happens to be on the H drive, Steam library, Steam apps, common, BeamNG drive, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the content levels folder and that's where you're going to find all of the different maps listed here so inside of this we find johnsonvalley.zip so we're going to keep this window over here and then on the right this is where my mods are installed I've also got them on my H drive under beamng mods 0.27 um, and so uh, everything that we're going to be working on is basically going to be within this folder here for the custom map. Now when you're working on a custom map um, your base map level is going to need to be in the version slash mods slash unpacked and then um, these different folders here are going to be what what house your files. So I've already kind of gotten a jump ahead on things here um, since we're working on a desert map um, I wanted to uh, create a new base map. I'll just go ahead and delete that and uh, walk through the whole process here. So basically in inside of Unpacked we need to have a new top level folder. Uh, this folder isn't really referenced by the game at all. It's just there to help you organize where things are at. Um, it's going to hold some of the subfolders here. So again I just deleted it, but I'm going to create it again. I wanted to walk through the step, create a new folder, I'll call this Desert Base. And then what we're going to do is inside of Desert Base, we're going to actually copy the contents of what was Johnson Valley into this for our copy. So I'm going to double click on that. It's going to open up WinRAR. If you don't have Win WinRAR, you can go to rarsoft.com and download it. It's free. Um, I use it quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy from this Johnson Valley zip, this levels folder, into my desert base. I'm just going to drag it and drop it over here. One thing to note is, um, unfortunately, I'm not on a SSD drive for this, so some of my copy and uh, transfer times would probably be a little bit longer than most people's unless you're on a laptop. Just let this thing complete. Okay, now we've got basically everything that was in the Johnson Valley zip file now in our own desert base um, area. Now, so when I go into levels here, you're going to see the Johnson Valley subfolder. So, in order for our map to show up um, as a unique name, we've got to come up with our own custom name. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call this, um, let's say, Desert Basin. So that's going to be the map name for this. So inside of, uh, again, the .27 mods unpacked, this is a high-level folder to hold our levels, Desert Base. Inside of that is a Levels folder. Inside of the Levels folder is the name of our map and inside of the name of our map is all the support files. We can go ahead and close out 
um, our Steam Library Apps folder. We don't need that for now. We can go ahead and close WinRAR over here. And so now we're going to start um, start the process of prepping this map for our own custom base map. Uh, very first thing I like to do is jump into the info.json file. If you don't have Notepad++, I would highly recommend it as an editor. Works really well. Let me just bump this uh, file size up here for you guys. A little easier to read. Change the title. Call it Desert Basin. Description. This can be anything you want. Desert map. Biome. I'm just going to call this desert. Roads. Off road. Change the author. And that should be all we need to do uh, to this file for now. So I'm going to save this by doing Control S to save, or you can just go File, Save. But I like to use the uh, keyboard shortcuts as much as possible here. Okay, so we've edited the information file. This is kind of the first thing that gets read in when you load the uh, map into BeamNG. But now we need to do uh, a couple other things. So we copied everything over from the um, Johnson Valley zip, and when we go inside of art, let's say art, shapes, building, inside here we've got main materials files, and you'll see these main materials.json files throughout your whole project. The problem with them being copied over is that <clears throat> they still reference the old Johnson Valley, and so we've got to update that with our new map name. So ours being Desert Basin, the old one being Johnson Valley. Um, we're going to switch this out. <clears throat> so uh, Notepad++ has a really cool feature called uh, Replace in Files. So I'm going to go File, Find in Files, and what I need to do is start copying at the L in Levels. Don't include the slash. Start with the L in Levels, copy all the way through Johnson Valley, and the N slash. Control C, paste it in what I want to find, then replace it with what we want. Now, um, the old one was Johnson Valley. The new one, just verifying, is desert underscore basin. So, desert basin. And then uh, filters are star dot star. Directory, we need to browse where we want to start doing this replacement from. So, this happens to be on my H drive under my .27 uh, mods folder, mods unpacked. Desert Base. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Um, if you don't select the right directory, you're going to probably screw up a bunch of your mods, so make sure you get this directory right. Uh, turn off Match Whole Word Only Off. Turn off Match Case. Make sure In Subfolders is selected. In, in Folders is selected. And we should be good to go. So we're going to replace In Files. So we're basically changing out anything that was Johnson Valley to Desert Basin. It's going to ask if you are sure. I'm going to say yes. And this is going to take a while. Um, I believe Johnson Valley has something around 14,900 uh, instances of that name in this project. Uh, we'll see when we get to the end of this copy process. Or rename process rather, not copy. Now an interesting thing to watch here is I've got the materials file opened from my folder and it's currently referencing levels.johnson valley. By the time this is through, we should see this update inside of Notepad. Okay, and we're done with that copy, and as you can see, uh, replace in files is reporting it it found 14,913 instances of this. So that's all the strings that were changed. And then when we look up, we can see that it has indeed been changed in our file that we had open as well. Okay, so what, what we've done there is basically relinked most of the entries here. Um, unfortunately, there are other linked um, there are other links that need to be updated throughout this process and we're not going to do them all right now 
but I just want to let you know that earlier I did find like a link to um, Jungle Rock Island assets and so as we encounter those we need to clean those up as well um, you want to have everything as self-referenced as possible like everything should live within your folder you don't want to make calls out to any of the vanilla maps for any of your assets because if you do and they update those assets on a version update you're going to be hating life because you're going to have a bunch of broken textures so just we'll take a mental footnote for that uh, for later as we come across them and do that but uh, for now most of our replacements are done okay so we can go ahead and close this json file out um, I usually like to use the one that's an art shapes building as a reference. It's pretty common for most of the um, vanilla maps, and that's, that'll give you your pattern matching that you need. So, Okay, so what have we done now? So we've copied the files from Johnson Valley into our folder. We've updated the links to most of the art assets. We've updated our info file. Now what we need to do is um, basically start removing some of the... Um, some of the assets that are in the map itself you know those are going to be things like the buildings the roads the decals uh, the placement of all of those things um, it appears that there's been an update to the way the game engine deals with um, with cached files um, before so like this step what we're going to go through right now is, is deleting all of the placed um, all the placed forest elements trees rocks that were part of brushes um, anything that was used uh, that you used a paintbrush in the forest tool to to add here. So inside of our level desert base levels desert base and art, there's a forest folder. Inside of that, oh I'm sorry, wrong forest. Um, one level up, sorry. Desert base levels desert basin. This is the forest file at the same level as your art. If you go into this, you'll see all of these different objects um, that you know each one of these files I'll open one of them up real quick represents the object desert rocks collection 01 generated and then this is every instance of it that appears on the map so there happens to be roughly 1700 instances of this um, in the past what I've been able to do is select all of these files and delete them and then the game clears them off the map. Unfortunately now the, with the way they cache it I have to do something a little bit different to uh, to make sure that they, that they don't appear. So what I'm gonna have to do is basically open up each one of these keep the file in place but um, remove the contents of them. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So I'm gonna right click and in Notepad++ and it's basically opened up every one of these uh, files inside of the editor. I'm just using this arrow button to get all the way to the left. And what we're going to do is Control A to select all, hit delete, Control S to save, and close. And we're just going to keep repeating. Next one, Control A, delete, Control S, close. Control A, delete, Control S, and close. And so I won't keep saying that, but you're going to see me do it. And we're going to go through each one of these. And you'll see that basically um, these are all resulting into a 0KB file over here. That's what we want to do. We want to basically remove all of the instance information for these different assets. So, we should be done now. Okay, inside of our unpacked, let's do this all the way over, inside of our version, mods, unpacked, uh, folder name, levels, map name, forest, all of our JSON files now are zeroed out, which means that they shouldn't be visible on the map anymore. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is clean up um, basically placement the, the manual placement of assets and buildings so the things that did not uh, get placed using a paintbrush so inside of you know at the top level of desert basin we're going to go into the main folder 
and um, I'm going to encourage you guys to to get into these um, JSON files, um, read them, just scan them. Even if you're not a coder, um, you can kind of start to understand how they laid things out for the game. It's going to be really important for you to understand that stuff when you get to debugging. So anyway, inside of Desert Basin main, um, if you open up items levels JSON, you'll see that it has a single entry called mission group. Well, that happens to be referencing the folder that's in the same subfolder. So when I go into mission group, there's another items level.json file. If we open that up, you're also going to see that there are the same assets, audio, camera bookmarks, player drop points as the folders here. So this is the quick way that we can basically um, get rid of the things that we know we don't need. I happen to have kind of looked at these things before to, to figure out what I do and don't need in things. So I don't need set dress trails, I don't need rocks, I don't need props, I don't need the night lights, I don't need any of the crawling stuff, I don't need event city, decal roads, or buildings. So basically I'm only leaving audio, camera bookmarks, level object, player drop points, and then the main levels, uh, item levels.json file. And I'm just going to hit delete. And all those are going to go away. Now, just because I deleted the folders for them doesn't mean that they're not trying to be referenced. They're still in this items.json file. So we've got to come in here and clean this file up as well. So we kept audio, we kept bookmarks, we kept level object and player drop points. All of these other ones, building, rocks, prop, electric, decal, all of this stuff down to 15, we didn't need. So I'm going to take this and hit delete. Now, uh, this is also going to be another interesting thing. Uh, you guys are going to need to know a little bit about um, JSON as a format, uh, uh, scripting or development format, uh, because if you're editing these text files, you need to make sure that you're doing things like, you can see that it's got a red open tag. You need to make sure that this has a red close tag um, and that you didn't accidentally delete that or add an extra one or whatever. If you screw up the brackets or the, you know, adding or missing or you know, deleting a comma, you can really screw things up. So just be aware that um, format matters in these text files and pay attention to, to how things are nested. So um, we've cleaned this one up. Um, we only have audio, camera bookmarks, level object, and player drop points. That's the same thing that we have here, just matching those up. And now we can hit save on that. Now with doing that, we should have now basically removed all of the placed objects at this point. So I'm just going to go back to our main level here and take a look at this. Um, we'll talk about a couple of these files. These um, at the top level of Desert Basin, when you create new forest brushes, like a, you know if you had a, a, a rock, your own custom rock that you wanted to be able to paint in with a paintbrush, as you create it, it would be added to this forest brushes 4.json file. Um, then you've got, um, like, I really don't mess with any of these. Uh, actually, we'll go into main decals, too. This is going to be another one we're going to update. So you can see that the this is a JSON file, so it's got an open bracket, a closed bracket, and a comma because you've got an element here called header, and then below it you've got another high-level element called instances. Now, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to get rid of all these instances. These are um, placement um, this is placement information for each of the different decals in the game uh, for the map. So um, I should be able to get rid of instances completely, but to make things clearer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select to the left of the um, the quotes and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to delete all this out. And so now basically we have a blank instances uh, element here for decals. When we add one in the game, it should go back and update this file and and, um, and put the instance information in there. So this one is now clean. Again, the comma is there after this one because header is a is an element, but it's followed by a second one.
but instances, there is not an element after instances, so it does not have a comma. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of discussion around you know, JSON formatting, but just some basic things to keep an eye open for. So let's say uh, decals. And I think now is probably a pretty good time to go ahead and launch the game and let's see what we've got. Um, in theory, looking at our info.json, we should have a um, map entry called Desert Basin. And we should be able to see that Pixel Monkey is the author of this. So we're going to load into the game now. Give me a moment. Now, if you if this is the first time launching the game after a version update, remember that uh, in this panel you're probably going to see a mods deactivated thing. Make sure that you enable mods, or else you're not going to see this custom map. So um, again, be aware of uh, whether or not you've got mods enabled. Make sure they're enabled. We're going to go into free roam, and then now here we've got Desert Basin. It's got our description. It's got the author is me. So this is uh, the one that we need to load into. Now, all of the previews and stuff are still, um, you know, the old preview files. We can update those later, but um, we're just going to go ahead and launch in. Now, fingers crossed, we should load in. We should see a terrain, but other than the grasses, we shouldn't see any buildings, any rocks, or any plants. You'll see the small, like, um, vanilla ones, but uh, but not the, the big ones. Okay, so here we are. Now we've got a black texture on our landscape. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out why this turned black out on the, uh, on the import, but we'll fix that um, whenever we do our custom height map. Um, let's go ahead and go into the world editor. And inside of here, we're now going to see that we only have audio, camera bookmarks, level object, player objects, and spawn vehicles. This is you know, basically what we had cleaned it up to. Um, one thing that, that I wanted to point out too is um, in Johnson Valley here, you can see that only part of this is black and the other part is textured right. Well, part of this is because the textures seem to be mislinked now, and we'll, we'll troubleshoot that. But on the other one, if I uh, open up my level object, terrain, you can see that there's some backdrops in here, backdrop meshes. Uh, the way that they got Jansen, Johnson Valley to be so huge is they actually created a mesh, like a rock mesh, except this happens to look like a landscape that you can actually drive over and, and everything else. And so if I turn the visibility of this off, you can actually see that the mesh goes away. Now they've also got custom meshes here for the road, and they did that for um, being able to manage the, the ground types and everything else. So since we're doing a custom, um, let's say we're going to do a custom base map, we don't want any of these meshes in here because the edges aren't going to match up with our map. So let's go ahead and take these and delete them out. And now we're just left with the base map here. Now let's go into the um, terrain materials real quick. I just want to look at what the game thought it wanted to do for um, for these textures. I mean you can see that the asphalt texture looks good, but this other one seems to be not calculating properly. So I'm going to go into here and Terrain Painter and let's find out which one of these is awkward. Okay, Rocky Dirt looks like it's not working. Grass 2, all these seem to be having the same issue where they're not passing the big texture through. So let's go into Terrain Material Library um, let's just choose Rocky Dirt. Rocky Dirt. And so here, everything looks like it, it is right. Um, you know, the, the terrain is linked to levels, desert basin, art trains, D terrain base. So before we do anything else, let's just try to reapply the texture. Um, one thing that's really important to to know when it comes to these terrain materials is that 
your base texture size needs to match your base mapping scale. So 4K, 4096 by 4096, and 4096. If you were doing a 2K map or an 8K map, you would want to make sure that these matched, and then also that um, your macro texture sizes match what you had for these subs down here. So what I'm gonna try to do first is I'm just gonna try to relink this texture. This is the one that's missing. This is when you when you see the black, it's usually your train base B. So I'm going to click on Browse for New Texture. This is looking at Levels, Desert Basin, Art Terrains. I'm going to scroll down to Terrain Base B. Now there's some Terrain Base um, asphalts in here, so don't accidentally click on these. So I'm going to click on Terrain Base B. I'm going to click on Open. And then it should have a pop-up here for applying a bulk change there we go and so it's going to say hey we found these other textures that look like they follow the same pattern as your base color map um, do you want to bulk change them we're going to say yes in a minute but i want to walk through these so these these names t train base b underscore nm r a o and h you can see what they actually link up to uh, b is our base color nm is our normal map r is our roughness map AO is ambient occlusion, H is height. And if you haven't ever dealt with these before, base color is obviously your main color map. Your normal um, basically describes some of the finer details of the shape of your terrain or the shape of the object. Um, roughness map is how shiny it is. Ambient occlusion is basically um, like a shadow map. It, it, it tends to create darker areas in the crevices, like places where you've got creases in your train. And then your height map is what describes how high the train is. Um, you know, the, how high is a mountain or how deep is a valley or whatever. So that's what those maps are. So we're going to do bulk change. And then we hit save changes to file. And there it is. So again, I don't know why the, the new version of the editor sometimes freaks out like that. Um, I saw that earlier whenever I was messing around with this map where it kind of flipped out to black. The way we fixed it is just by relinking it using the bulk change texture. And so now that things are fixed, I'm just going to go ahead and save this real quick. File, save level. And then let's, uh, let's fly around and just do some quick inspection. So you can see our, um, our main map is in place. We can actually still come in here and raise and lower this. Oops, that was unsmooth. You can raise and lower this. You can smooth it out. If you can't raise and lower it, you might be on that old um, mesh that we deleted. So be aware of that. If you can't paint your textures on it, you're probably on the old mesh. So anyway, we're back in here. You can see that we've got the grasses in place. We've got um, small rocks that are still here that are textured. We don't have any missing textures. Everything looks to be in place. You can see where the roads were, but you don't see road decals. You don't see any, any overlays. And so if you wanted to, you could honestly use this as your base map and just start building from here. Um, so what we're going to do is, now that we've seen that everything looks good, I'm going to come back to where my vehicle is. A quick way to, to find yourself is select what it is in the scene tree and hit F, and it's going to frame that object. So that'll save you a little bit of time flying around. And I just want to make sure our forest tools work. So if I want to paint in some bushes, those come in fine. We've got some rocks we can paint in. We've got large rocks, medium rocks small rocks, and I'm just doing control Z to get rid of them uh, after I lay them down. I'm just making sure all this stuff looks good. Okay, so all of the, the base uh, brushes seem to work. And then, um, so another thing in that's interesting is even though we deleted all of the buildings and stuff off of the placement of the map, it doesn't mean that they went away. So they're actually still here. We're gonna go into the asset browser. And in the asset browser, you're going to see two art folders. You're going to see our Desert Basin map, 
with art export forest and main and then the second one now the second one is a, a global um, art asset uh, that's referencing the game like the core game assets um, you want to avoid these as much as you can because you'll if you use them you'll create a dependency on them and if the game devs change the name or delete them or move their folder you're going to have problems for a version update so I you know would advise strongly to not reference anything in the second art folder only reference the ones that are in your art folder so I'm going to go into art and let's just go into rocks and we're just going to pull a couple of rocks in just make sure that everything is looking good and they are so those come in we can move them around we can hit uh, so quick um, uh, note on editor one number one changes it to move number two on your keyboard changes it to rotate number three sets it to scale so those are the quick uh, keys there and so you can rotate this thing all the way around or whatever um, one thing to watch out for is some of these dev rocks um, they, they look great on one side but the underside of them for some of the bigger rocks they really you know optimized them for frames per second so they made it super low poly on the underside so if you start flipping some of these rocks around make sure you're looking out for these um, I'll call them false bottoms where it's not as high resolution on the bottom as is the top so anyway um, looks like our rocks work and I just want to check a building real quick so back into asset browser we'll go to buildings um, let's just pull the gas station in and that looks like it's there so no missing textures so we're all good to go okay this is a great time for us to save our map this is a, a good starting point no matter like if you want to use it once or if you want to use it ten times instead of spending the half hour or 40 minutes that we spent getting to this point over and over again we're only going to do it once so let's save this out so file save level and then we're going to exit the editor you can just toggle it with f11 if you want hit escape main menu quick game and so we we've been working mostly here in this 0.27 mods unpacked folder directly but um, what you need to know is that when you make edits to a file like we did in the editor the changes the overwrite changes actually go into a different folder so they go into you know the mod uh, version or the uh, game version 0.27 except they actually go into levels so now inside of 27 levels now there's a desert basin and it only has a couple of the files now we edited the terrain, so it rewrote a new terrain file. Uh, we edited the decal, so it fixed that. Um, and just basically some of the, the smaller changes replicated here. So now we're going to do what I call that commit. So I'm going to open up another version or another instance of Windows Explorer here. Uh, file, open new window. We're going to reference the 0.27 levels folder and then 0.27 mods unpacked our map base levels desert basin so pay really close attention uh, to the nesting of this because we've got our, our top level folder under unpacked desert base but our map name is actually desert basin so um, we just need to make sure that when we put this in it's in the right level so what I'm going to do is we're going to take the changes that got written to the 0.27 levels folder and apply it to our unpacked uh, levels folder so select that control X to cut it I like to cut instead of copy so that I know that I have properly applied everything I'm going to come over to levels control V to paste it go ahead and replace and it's going to take a second because it's looking at the files that were duplicates and so now our levels folder art is empty and our commits are here so I'm going to take a uh, you know a step back from our, our 
subfolder that we paste it into and come back up to the levels folder here. So 0.27 mods, unpack, desert base, levels. I'm going to right click on that, add to archive, and let's just call this um, desert base template. Uh, this is just, uh, I want a name that, um, that lets me know that, that there really isn't anything on this. Um, it's, it's our starting point for all all Johnson Valley base maps from this point forward. So I'm going to click OK, and that's going to start packing that out. We can go ahead and close this folder here while it does its thing. And then I usually leave the, um, leave the zip in this same level, like in this location, and you'll see that over time we're going to have multiple zips here. And you can push those out to another drive if you want, but try to keep at least a couple of versions handy. So if you screw things up, you can always come back. Okay. Um, one thing that we still haven't done with this that I need to make sure that we clear up as well is in this folder here, there's a, in, in the top level of Desert Basin, um, or, you know, your map name, same level as art, there's a terrain terror.depth.png file. This file is used to um, basically set how far your vehicle sinks into the ground. It's a, a secondary depth map, not to be confused with the height map. So this is, again, how much you sink into the ground for mud or for sand or whatever. Um, we're going to go and open that up in Photoshop. Uh, you can use GIMP or paint.net. Let's drag it in here. And what we need to do with this is um, is make sure that this is pure white. So um, sometimes you might see this has having gray or, or whatever, or some varying levels of gray. Just make sure that you're choosing pure white, um, 255, 255, 255 for RGB, and then fill it. In Photoshop, it's Alt Backspace to fill with your foreground color. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. You also notice that this is um, for the the file format. It's a PNG, but it's grayscale 8 bit. Uh, if we go to image mode, you can see that I can use uh, grayscale bitmap, RGB color, CMYK, blah, blah, blah. Make sure that this one is a grayscale PNG that's 8 bit, not 16 bit. Um, some of the, sometimes it's really going to matter for you. So. Um, and again, what we did really is, if this had some grayscale values on it, um, like let's say you were sinking into the sands or whatever in, in the old map, um, if you built your new map with a different height, meal, uh, height field there, um, you might accidentally start sinking in asphalt or whatever, um, creating some really weird behavior. So this just kind of clears that playing field. So that's done. We fixed the depth map on this. And so, honestly, like, at this point, if you wanted to, um, like I said, start making a map from where we're at, you're, you're off to the races. Um, that's, that's the basics of it. Now, if you want to stick around a little bit longer, uh, we can talk about how to do our own custom ground models and even how to bring in our own height map. So, we'll do ground models first, and then we'll do height maps after that. So this is kind of a, a more advanced topic. Uh, I've shown a couple of people how to do this now. Um, it seems to work well. So let's get into it. I'm going to open up a new folder for this, new window. And so basically the game, like the, the default uh, uh, game engine itself has a global ground models file that it references uh, for you know the default depth for mud, the default depth and friction and stuff for sand or for asphalt or whatever it may be. What we're going to do now is, is create our own in a way that actually changes it for our map, for everybody who plays on our map. Um, 
So let's let's just do that. So first thing I got to do is I got to find the original install directory for Steam. So Steam library, Steam apps. Go into common, and we're going to BMNG. Now inside of the top level BMG, there is a game engine zip. So I'm going to open that up. And then inside a game engine zip, you can close this background window now. Inside of art, you're going to see a file called groundmodels.json. The way that we create a local override for this file is at the same level as Desert Basin, uh, same level as art, export, force, whatever, create a new folder called ground models. And we're going to just copy that over into our folder. So now inside ground models, we've got a copy of this ground models file. We can close the game engine zip now. And let's open this up in Notepad++. No, I don't want to update. OK, inside here, you're going to see all of the different ground types that are available in the, the vanilla game. Now, you can make your own from scratch. They don't need to be called anything specific. But um, so that we don't run into any name collisions or confusion, let's go ahead and edit each the name of each one of these to be unique from the game default. So what I usually do is I usually, you know, just append pixel. You can put your name, you can put whatever you want. Uh, as long as these names are all unique. They also keep, um, you know, the, the naming of this all uppercase. I like that because it helps keep things from being confusing down the road. So I would stick with all uppercase. I don't know that it matters specifically, um, but for safety sake, I would just keep it all uppercase. Again, these are all of the, um, the default ground models. And you can go to their website and you can kind of read up on what each of these different um, Things do static friction, hydronet, dynamic, strybic, velocity, blah, blah, blah. Um, they've got pretty decent information on uh, the BeamNG website for what those kind of do. But I will talk you through the most um, useful ones that don't require a lot of thinking up front. Um, again, since I'm here, we're at the bottom of the file, I just want to remind people pixel soft collision general this opens the tag for this object this one closes this object and then there's a comma after it because there's another one below it but since pixel void is the last entry on this particular JSON file the end bracket does not have a comma after it if you add a comma there it's gonna break the file it's not gonna completely parse it and then you're gonna wonder why you're not seeing updates so just friendly reminder here okay so what we've done is we've copied the ground models file from the game engine zip from the game contents folder into our own custom folder called ground models, the same level as art. We've edited that JSON file. We've appended each of the names with, um, you know, basically made them unique by adding a prefix to it. I'm going to hit save on that. And so now, um, any changes that we make to this ground models base on file, uh, ground models JSON file, will uh, will be applied to our custom materials. Okay, we can get out of this for now, and let's go ahead and launch into the game and let's make sure that we see our new entries here. So, um, launch into BeamNG. find our map go ahead and get into the editor here and then in order to see these changes so let's um, Let's just create a little area here. So go into train tools, train painter. I think sand has got some depth to it. So we're going to paint some sand there. And then let's also do 
dirt sandy because I think these have got two different depths and you can kind of tell where the border is by the different textures hit F11 and when I drive into this you're gonna see that we sink you know about halfway through the tire on one sand model come all the way to the top for asphalt there's no uh, depth there and then when we get onto the other sandy it sinks a little bit very little bit but it's almost the same as asphalt not quite so let's say we wanted to make this um, the second sand actually deeper because it you know it's it's sand, maybe we feel like it should sink more than this. And maybe we actually want it to sink more than than the dune sand. So we're gonna go in, hit F11. Again, this one here happens to be dirt sandy. We're gonna go and um, go into the terrain material library, find dirt sandy. Now up here at the top you see ground model, dirt sandy. If we click on the drop down here, we scroll down, now we see all of the custom ones that we added in the ground models file. So let's find the pixel. Where's the um, pixel dirt sandy at? We'll just use the pixel, let's use pixel sand, okay? So ground model that I'm going to choose for this is pixel sand. So I'm going to hit save changes to file. Then with the editor open, we can go ahead and kill that. We're going to come in here, find the pixel sand, and it's here. Now. Um, the way that we control the depth is uh, there's a couple different things but honestly the the main one is default depth so instead of it being 0.1 depth let's actually change this to 0.5 depth now um, again when you get into editing some of these things if you get the ratios out of out of whack if you get too extreme sometimes it'll break the game model so if all of a sudden nothing sinks um, or you know none of the depths work. Try rebooting first. You know, exit the game, come back in. Um, if that still doesn't work, roll back to a previous edit and then readjust your values. I, I've run into problems where the game just freaks out after so many changes. So just be aware of that. The other thing is, for some reason, uh, all of their decimal values need to start with a zero. So instead of just having this a 0.5, make sure you've got a leading zero in front of that 0 0.5. So I'm going to edit this, control S to save it. Now when I come back to the game, you're going to see the game engine kind of pause. And I, that's when it's loading the, the changes in. And then now you can see our new depth. So now that's the old sand. Now my new depth applied of 0.5. And it's really that easy. Now again, I'm, I'm only changing the, um, the default depth. Uh, you can change your friction. So like this is a way that uh, if you wanted to change your friction models on rocks. So like let's say you think the rocks are too sticky and you're like I want more of a challenge. So we're going to find our pixel rock and instead of changing depth we're going to change the strength. The strength is just like a multiplier for all of these values. So if you kind of like the way it feels, but it's just not enough, uh, you can say, okay, well, fine. Pixel Rock is going to be uh, 0 0.5 on friction. And this is, again, just going to be your, your grip values. So I'm going to hit save on that. And then if we wanted to, um, let's just uh, go back here. And I don't have any rocks here to really mess around with on this, so I'm just going to apply it back to this uh, dirt sandy that we had. So my depth is going to go away, but it should be a little bit more slippery now. So pixel rock, hit save changes to file.
And then let's make sure that this is saved. Pixel rock. And then hit F11. Now look, all of a sudden we're raising up off the ground again. Um, and so now you can see that um, you know, I'm getting good friction here on the asphalt, but when I get onto that um, plate of sand, I slide a lot more. You can see that front end slide a little bit. It's, I'm peeling out, but I'm not leaving tracks. The tracks are not also another feature. There's a um, leave skid marks flag in the ground models to turn on and off those, um, those skid marks, but definitely affecting the friction. So what I would do is, um, you know, when I create a new rock model or if I take an existing rock, um, I could apply my pixel rock ground model instead of the standard rock, uh, rock model and uh, change our friction. So that is how you do custom ground models. Um, actually not too painful, um, everything being considered. Now, the last thing that we want to do is, um, you know, this is a great base map. You know, there's tons of ways to do trails on this. I mean, obviously the game devs have proven that it's a good base map to make some pretty nice desert stuff on, but let's say you wanted to do your own. Um, I've got a couple of starting maps available on my Patreon. If, um, if you want to download those, um, you know, basically sign up and then download those to use as your base, or you can also source them from any number of locations or make your own. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, um, one of my own custom base maps here. We're going to go ahead and swap this whole height map out with our own custom one. So to do this, um, I'm going to open up Photoshop again. And we're going to browse to our desert basin, art, terrains. And then inside of terrains here, this is kind of where we did the relinking earlier. We're going to find terrain base B, terrain base H, N, R, and where's my AO train base? AO, there it is. So we drag those into Photoshop. And this is the way I'd recommend um, kind of swapping them out for the most part unless you um, have things already set up where the names are exactly the same, which I, I already do. But I just kind of wanted to show you what these look like uh, before I got into switch, switching them out. Now, the other thing that's interesting is when you look at their color map, we're going to zoom in on this, you can see that like where the roads are, they've actually kind of colored them different. And that's how their grounds look the way they do. That's why their roads look the way they do. That's why the dunes look the way they do is because there's a, a certain amount of um, pre-work that they've done on their textures to lay out where the roads and stuff are. So just important to know that um, that there's a bit of work that needs to be done in the color map to make the maps look right. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what those look like real quick. And then I've actually got another set of files that I've created from scratch too. On my desktop here, which is messy now. I can close, uh, let's just minimize that. Oh, come on, Photoshop. So uh, inside of this folder on my desktop, uh, this happens to be Rattlesnake Ridge. I believe this is in Idaho. Um, I've created my own files. Now these have exactly the same name, T train base AO, T train base B, T train base H, and, and R. So what I'm gonna do is um, take my files, which this is also important, make sure you go to properties, details. These are 4096 by 4096. The old files are details 4096 by 4096. So they're both 4K assets. 
Um, it just means that um, we shouldn't have to change a lot of numbers around to get this stuff to show up right. Again, if my files were 2K and the source map, like the old ones were 4K, we'd have to change some numbers. But since we're 4K and 4K, we should be able to just take these, control C, copy them, and paste them on top of our destination. Now, so we've swapped out the base map uh, assets here. Okay, we're gonna go back into beam and G. Find our map. Go ahead and spawn in. Okay, so now we're in here. And now we get to load in the new map assets. So we're going to hit F11 and terrain tools, import terrain. And here's where we, oh, actually, before we get too far here, um, one of the things that, that we need to do is um, there's a, a texture map that we're going to need to apply. Um, in order to make that work, and get back into Photoshop here, I like to create a new, um, basically a fully white uh, map that's going to tell it where to paint certain texture types. So go new, since this is 4K, go 4096, 4096. This matches all of our other textures. Now, notice this came in as CMYK. I don't know why it's doing it right now. We need to make sure that this is a RGB file. It uh, also needs to be pure white. So I'll backspace. Save as, and we're going to find our folder where our level's at. So mods impact, there's a base, levels, there's a base in, art, terrains. And I'm just going to call this um, uh, 4K full white, just so I know that it's a full, like all white 4K file. That PNG, save that. And you'll see how we use it here in a second. Okay, we'll go back into BBNG. Okay, so um, back to importing our terrain. We've brought up the terrain tools, terrain painter. Now we're going to browse for our height map. Click on that, levels desert basin. And then we're going to go into art, terrains, scroll down to the bottom, find a terrain base underscore H. Not the asphalt one, but our other one. This is our new height map. Click open on that. Then on texture maps, this is where we're going to choose that file that we just created. So terrains 4K full white. Open that. And basically what this is saying is every place that's white, I want you to paint a certain ground type. So we'll just do um, dirt and grass. Uh, we're going to apply the transform. And I'm going to set this to negative uh, 2048, negative 2048. This is usually, I usually do this half of whatever our total resolution is. So since it's a 4K file, half of that's 2048. So negative, negative, apply transform. Um, the other thing that, that, that we want to look at in this here is um, meters per pixel. So basically every pixel of that 4K height map is going to relate back to one meter of space in the game world here. Um, for 4K files, usually I will set meters per pixel to 0.5. So every pixel is half a meter in the real world. And then max height, I will usually start them out at 250 units. We can adjust this later too. This just basically says um, how much to stretch the, the height map vertically, uh, how high are your mountains, right? Okay, so meters per, pixel, or meters per pixel is 0.5, max height is 250. We've browsed to our height map, which is the terrain base underscore H. We've set a texture map, uh, full 4K white image 
we want it to be dirt and grass. We set our transform. I'm going to click import. And actually, before we do this, well, we'll just roll through this. Um, if the height changes to where our vehicle is currently under the surface, it's going to freeform, like fall down. And we're just going to hit J to stop the simulation. But uh, let's just go ahead and import. And there we go, falling, hit J. And it's going to freeze that. And now our map is way over here. And this is just based off of the that transform offset. So I'm just holding down Shift and W to fly over here. And so now you can see that um, we do have our height map in. It's different. It's not matching the old one, but the texture is still the old texture. You can see that we've got you know the grasses and stuff are in here from the the particular map that we chose. Um, so, how do we get the texture to update? Well, the texture doesn't automatically bring itself in, even though we've copied it over the old one. So we've got to manually do a refresh. And we, we did that when we first started in um, from cleaning up the map. Um, so we're just going to go re-import those. So go back into Terrain Material Library. We're currently using Dirt and Grass. So Dirt and Grass is what we're going to edit here. We're going to do a bulk change texture. We're going to reselect Terrain Base B. It's 4096, 4096, and 4096. Um, do you want to apply these changes? Yes, do a bulk change. Save the changes to file. It's going to take a second. And now, if we've done things right, we should see the change, and we're not. So we're going to go troubleshoot that here in a second here. Dirt and grass, train material library, dirt and grass, 4096, 4096, I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to do a bulk change one more time. And here's here's a funny thing too. Like sometimes if it if it thinks it doesn't need to update, it won't. So I'm going to switch it to this asphalt for a minute. Bulk change. Save changes. Now look at that. Now it updated because it's like, oh, it's a different file name. And then we can bulk change it back to our train base. Bulk change. Save changes. And there we go. So this is the right height map or right color map now. You can see that the see how the color changes along the ridge. It's following the landscape. That's all good. So we're good to go here. I'm still not 100% convinced though that this is what we want to see. So I'm going to just add a new terrain. Let's go to, um, let's add asphalt to an area. You have uns uns unsaved terrain changes, save level. Okay, fine. We'll save the level. And let's lay down some asphalt. And let's add some sand. Now each of these um, still, like, let's go into sand here. That's all been updated. It all seems like it's really referencing the right things. It's all in the UI, 4096. It's there. Let's go back into sand, bulk change, terrain base B, bulk change, save changes to file. Oops, sand. So that's there. That looks good. 
I'm trying to figure out where these roads see the roads that go up and over the ridges where those are coming from in theory that's the the decals but I want to make sure that that's not in like a texture file someplace because it really is looking like it's a texture file it is possible that they are no that's that's still the old texture all right let's just do this i'm i'm really curious now again this they keep changing things in the editor which um doesn't behave like it used to so we're going to exit out we're going to quit the game i'm going to close these in photoshop just to make sure that nothing's open there We're going to go into our levels folder. There is some stuff here. Art terrains. It's got some main materials files. This is where we're where we've been updating things. But let's just go ahead and apply this real quick. So levels, desert basin, control X, mods, unpacked, levels, control V. Go write those files. Just go ahead and close that out just to make sure nothing's open there. And let's relaunch the game. Free Roam Desert Basin. Now, again, our moving or our spawn points are going to be different now. So we expect to fall through the ground. Uh, so we're going to hit spawn. When we come in, we're going to hit J to freeze the. Um, simulation so we don't fall indefinitely into the abyss and then we're gonna shift C to go to free cam fly over here and if this doesn't work we're gonna actually go and try to reimport the train again just to see if for some reason it is um, if it's got some cache so looking at this I still think that this is the old texture it just happens to line up really well in some of these places um, I know that the height map is different because these ridges aren't in the original so I do know that okay so let's go into F11 first thing we're gonna try to do is let's just reimport so we're gonna go height map art shapes or I'm sorry art terrains underscore H it's good I'm gonna not do the texture map this time first let's just do it with a blank one just to see what it does 0.5 to 50 apply transform let's just leave this at 512 512 just in case they've changed something in the back end I'm gonna click import okay there we go now we're all black so it's cleared out the textures this is what I wanted to do is make sure that the textures updated to something other than the default okay now it says warning material it doesn't have anything to write right so now I'm gonna go re-import it again actually I'm gonna try this too sorry I'm experimenting a little bit in real time so you can manually paint these things in and it's going to be creating the mask that you know that it's going to write in the background but I don't want any of that so let's do this we can do a texture map art drains okay white and I may have a theory on this but I'm kind of curious now so rocky dirt we apply that everywhere import it okay now we're back to looking the way we were before rocky dirt let's go ahead and update the textures bulk change apply that Save changes to file. 
still not updating. 8192. Okay, so it's definitely uh, seeing those changes. We should should be seeing like some reds and stuff in here. So it is missing terrain texture. We've saved it. This was from before when we first loaded in. depth image has wrong resolution. It's 4096. Okay. Oh, okay. So again, this game is really doing some very interesting um, things with caching. So I did this earlier with the same base name and I think it's pulling cache out of that. So I'm going to exit out. This is all good real-time troubleshooting, by the way. Um, don't save changes. I'm going to launch game. I'm going to clear the cache. I just want to see what it's going to do. Now, before you do this, make sure you don't have anything in the levels folder that you care about. Uh, the good thing is that we do have a snapshot of that clean template. So we're good to go. If everything gets screwed up, we can always come back to this. Um, we just have to remember what we forgot to, to do. Now this time I'm going to go into support tools and I'm going to clear the cache and I'm going to do a deep cache. Clean, yes, yes. And this may take a minute. Yes. Now it's going to do a hash. Okay. Thank goodness it wasn't the five hours. Now yeah, we're going to launch back in and let's see what has become of our map after a deep cache clean. Go to free roam, desert basin. Watch this. Get ready to hit J to pause our game so we don't fall to infinity. We'll fix those two in this next round. Okay, so we pause that. Shift C to go into custom camera. I'm feeling a little hope here. Look at that. So again, caching issues. See how our landscape is now looking the way it's supposed to. Our textures are lined up. Our height fields lined up. We've got our custom map in place. Um, so basically, just so you understand what I was doing is, even though the files have been changed on my hard drive um, in both the levels and the mods folder, the game still stores temporary cache files in different places um, that I have yet to find. And so by doing the deep cache purge on that, it forced those other files uh, to get cleaned up. So. Uh, Here's our custom height map. We're good to go. Now let's fix the uh, spawn points real quick. So we're going to hit F11. And we're going to bring up, let's see, where's our view at? Layouts, revert to factory, because I don't know what happened to my inspector and asset browser. There's that. Where's my scene tree? There it is. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so player drop points. What we're going to do is um, we're going to move these onto our map, and they're way out there in the middle of, of nowhere right now. 
So I'm just going to drag it. Oh, actually, let's, um, let's try to zero these out. Do it by the numbers. There we go. So zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. This is just to get them close. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. And zero, zero, zero. Okay, they're all been zeroed out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change uh, toggle, toggle terrain snap on, and then we can move these around. Let's fix our camera speed so we can fly faster. And let's just place one spawn point here. Let's place a spawn point up over here, make sure it's on the map, and it wasn't. Let's move one over here. And of course, you know, once you start laying stuff out, um, then your absolute placement will be make more sense. Oops. City. Okay, so now all of our spawn points should be someplace on the map without us falling through every time. Okay. And I'd say at this point, honestly, um, now you're on to map making. So now you're going to start you know, spawning your trees, doing your rocks, making your roads. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into all the finer details because we've been in this video forever tonight, uh, chasing some of the bugs. But, um, but anyway, yeah, this this should make you dangerous. Um, you know, it's basically again Johnson Valley assets, all the you know rocks from Johnson Valley, all the roads, all of the same assets that they use to make their map now with a custom height map to do whatever we want. Oh, here's the other funny thing. So, um, notice how I can't get this to sink into the ground. Well, it's because I just changed my spawn points with uh, train snap on. Turn that off and then you can sink that into the ground. But anyway, um, hopefully you find this video helpful. Uh, a bit long, but helpful. Uh, again, this stuff isn't easy. There's always going to be bugs. So you got to learn to troubleshoot, but, um, Thanks for watching and uh, good luck out there.